Direct News TV February 3, 2024 Israel's war on Gaza clashes in Gaza City despite Israeli all clear. Overnight attacks in the eastern part of Rafah have killed 24 people as an expected Israeli army operation looms. More than 1 million hungry, cold, and sick displaced Palestinians await Israel's planned attack on Rafah City with children roaming the streets looking for scraps of food. No evidence was given on how the U.S. Army selects targets. We put a question to the National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby on Friday on how targets, following the airstrikes in Iraq and Syria, were selected. We were told there was clear and irrefutable evidence that these were linked to attacks on U.S. interests. When asked if we could see this evidence, none was provided. When we asked if this evidence would be forthcoming, we were told we must trust the U.S. military. You'll remember that we were told to trust the U.S. military back in 2003, before the U.S. invasion of Iraq. And that intelligence turned out to be faulty. This time around, the U.S. military is promising to be more transparent. Houthi official says Red Sea attacks will continue. On X, Mohammed al bukaidi a member of the Houthi political bureau, says that the Yemeni group will continue operations against the Zionist entity despite U.S. and U.K. airstrikes against it, the most recent of which occurred in the last hour. Our military operations against the Zionist entity will continue until the aggression against Gaza stops, no matter what sacrifices it costs us. We will meet escalation with escalation, and victory comes only from God, al bukaidi wrote. U.S. and U.K. claim credit for strikes on Yemen. The U.S. and U.K. have issued a joint statement, saying their militaries, with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada, Denmark, the Netherlands and New Zealand hit 36 Houthi targets in 13 locations across Yemen. The strikes were intended to further disrupt and degrade the capabilities of the Iranian-backed Houthi militia to conduct their reckless and destabilizing attacks against U.S. and international vessels lawfully transiting the Red Sea, the statement said. According to the statement, airstrikes hit buried weapons storage facilities, missile systems, launchers and other capabilities of the Houthis. It is not clear if these strikes, though the statement mentions the Houthis' affiliation with Iran, are part of the U.S.'s stated plans to retaliate for drone attacks on Jordan that killed three U.S. personnel. Video shows strikes on Yemeni capital. A social media video verified by Al Jazeera's fact-checking unit shows a large explosion over Yemen's Sana'a. We are still waiting on more details on these strikes but U.S. media is reporting they were carried out jointly by the militaries of the U.S. and U.K. We now have more on the strikes hitting Houthi targets in Yemen. The Houthi-affiliated al masira TV says seven U.S. raids hit the Al-Jar area in the Abs district in the Haja Governorate, and two strikes were on the Ni Hushesh district in Sana'a. The media outlet said another three strikes targeted the Jabal al jada area in al Ahiya and Al-Salif districts in Hodeida. Reports of new strikes on Yemen, Houthi-affiliated media, the Saba Agency, has said that U.S. and U.K. strikes have hit the governorates of Sana'a, Haja, Damar, and al -Bayda. In addition, the Reuters news service, quoting two unnamed U.S. officials, has filed a report saying the targets struck in Yemen were Iran-linked. Reuters said these strikes appeared to be part of the U.S.'s ongoing retaliation against Iran-affiliated groups, which the U.S. blames for drone attacks that killed three of its personnel in Jordan last week. Yesterday, the U.S. struck 85 targets in Iraq and Syria, which it says belonged to Kat'ib Hezbollah, the armed group that claimed responsibility for the attack in Jordan. At least 16 people in Iraq were killed in yesterday's strikes, the Iraqi government said as it condemned the new aggression against its sovereignty and warned of dire consequences in the region. Israeli settlers raid village near Jenin, Wafa. According to the report, the settlers were accompanied by Israeli occupation forces when they raided several homes in the village of Farrison, southwest of Jenin. The report said the settlers damaged the contents of the houses and seized surveillance camera recordings. Malik al Zaban, a resident of the village, said the settlers ransacked a poultry farm he owns, 
which they destroyed after tearing down greenhouses and smashing equipment. He added that the settlers broke down the doors and windows of several houses. Settlers also took control of a plot of agricultural land in the mountainous area of the nearby Zabda village, which they are now using for their livestock to graze. They are also preventing the Palestinian landowners from accessing their properties while under the protection of the Israeli military, Wafa reported. Israel considering moving border crossing from Rafah over Egypt tensions. As diplomatic tensions between Israel and Egypt continue to rise over Israel's continuing war on Gaza and its military's plans to seize the Strip's southern border with Egypt, Israel is considering closing the Rafah border crossing with Egypt, Israeli broadcaster Channel 13 reports. If Israel decides to go ahead with the move, the crossing would be placed at the Israel-Gaza-Egypt border triangle area, near Karim Abu Salem, Karim Shalom, and would not have any involvement from Egyptian authorities in security checks, the broadcaster says. Its report adds that Israel has raised this issue with the Egyptians but has not yet gotten a definitive response. U.S. hits Houthi missiles in Yemen, CENTCOM. The U.S. Army Central Command says it has conducted strikes against six Houthi anti-ship cruise missiles prepared to launch against vessels in the Red Sea. U.S. forces identified the cruise missiles in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen and determined they presented an imminent threat to U.S. Navy ships and merchant vessels in the region, the statement on X said. The Houthis have been attacking ships in the region since November in support of the Palestinian people, demanding Israel stop bombarding Gaza. U.S. House panel recommends $17.6 billion in military aid for Israel. The funding bill, offered by a House of Representatives appropriations panel, could come to a vote in the full House sometime next week, Speaker Mike Johnson said in a letter to members. The Republican-controlled House had previously approved $14.3 billion in new military aid to Israel but with the requirement that it be paid for by clawing back a chunk of money already targeted for the U.S. Internal Revenue Service. Video shows massive destruction of residential towers in Gaza City. Palestinian journalist Omar al-Ghaza has shared the video, which Al Jazeera verified, of the ruins of northern Gaza City. It shows entire residential towers reduced to rubble after an extensive and indiscriminate bombing campaign by the Israeli military on the city. Palestinians who fled the bombing have been returning to Gaza's largest city after the Israeli army pulled out of some neighborhoods there. In other areas, it continues to clash with Palestinian fighters. Only 450 out of 2,700 Palestinians referred for treatment abroad have left Gaza, Dr. Dr. Sobi Skaik, Director General of the Turkish Friendship Hospital, who has been pushed to another hospital in Rafa like most of the internally displaced, says the referrals to be treated abroad are high but the injured are not being allowed out of Gaza fast enough. Skaik tells Al Jazeera that the services he and his staff have been able to provide are simple due to a lack of equipment and medicine and that the small number of specialists is not enough to sustain the large numbers of injured and sick. We have no cancer medications at all in Gaza. We also don't have the facilities to diagnose illnesses, our doctors have been killed, our infrastructure has been destroyed, no medications to our patients, we are merely receiving patients to alleviate their pain, he said. My name is Kingsley. Please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be the first to be notified whenever we post, you won't regret it.